This is the world we live on. From here, everything looks quiet and simple, but there is a lot going on down there in good and very bad ways since the beginning of mankind. In this video that I put together, I created a structure and organized all of this to create what I call the human formula. I will reference several websites, images to articles on the internet today, which I gathered over the years that will show proof of this human formula that every person on this planet falls into. You will notice that much of what I will say and share is what many of you have thought about in one form or another. On the internet, there is the kid president who talks about stuff going on in the world and how to make things better. Well, in one video, he talked about that the internet can be used for good or evil. Well, that is very true. But that doesn't apply to just the internet, but to human beings in general. We can live on this planet to do good or to do evil. Human beings are aggressive animals. This is what a World War II veteran said in a Ken Burns documentary talking about if we can live in a world without war. Well, we can't because there will always be evil and there will always be wars because human beings are aggressive animals. And our history is proof of that. With the Vietnam War, the Napoleon War, the Thirty Years War, to Genghis Khan and his view of conquering the world, to the Hundred Years War, to even World War I. Now these are horrible events for our planet, but they get worse. The Civil War in the United States was a horrible time with great casualties in a time that the South believed was justified in their hearts and their way of life. The Civil War was probably my first experience of seeing how evil and aggressive humans can be in this world. The Second World War, almost a century later, showed even more evil for what human beings have done to each other. More than 50 to 60 million people, mostly civilians, died in that war, which includes more than 6 million Jews. In such aggressive acts, it's almost impossible to believe it really happened. But besides the horrible acts of war, the evil of humanity that I remembered began with such violence like the shooting at Columbine High School and with Sandy Hook Elementary. And then there is Halloween 2013 and what people were wearing. Whether it was blackface, insults to the tragedies of 9-11, the Boston Marathon bombing, to the death of Trayvon Martin, and all posing proudly with smiles. These were things that made me stop and think. Why are people the way that they are? How can anyone be so insensitive towards each other? Why? Well, I figured it out. Here we go. Every person on this planet lives in a small bubble, which we call our virtual world. This virtual world we live in is like the worlds they lived in for the Matrix, Inception, to even the cell with Jennifer Lopez. For the movie Inception, humans could design or build the world they live in. The movie The Cell, people could travel into someone's mind living and experiencing things in their world. This virtual world that we live in is based on our personal beliefs, our values, ethics, memories, feelings, and so on. These are based on our personal requirements about life and what is right or wrong our personal opinions, our personal preferences, what we like or dislike, what we are passionate about, what is important to us, and much more. These beliefs, values, ethics, feelings, which make up you and your virtual world, is your belief system, or what I call your personality fingerprint. Let's stick with belief system. But this belief system is neither right or wrong. Well, it is right, but within your virtual world. And you are the center of your virtual world and everything revolves around you based on your beliefs. But here's the thing about the virtual world that circles you. They all exist inside 
the real world, which is a lot bigger. And it consists of 7 billion real people. People that will have very different belief systems from different requirements, different preferences, what's important to them, what they're passionate about. There are people in the real world that love Minecraft and the hundreds of videos of Minecraft that is out there. Song parodies, Minecraft video movies, etc. Many of these people like the song and the video, What Does the Fox Say? Many people argue on the internet that songs like this shows the weakness in our intelligence and our species. There are several YouTube channels like this one where a person is acting out Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball video getting over 78 million views, mostly positive, and has over 2 million subscribers. There are people in the real world that love this kind of stuff. There are some people who think that the PS4 is better and some people who think that the Xbox One is better. There are people who are seriously invested in their sports and the teams that they represent, whether it is the Raiders, the 49ers, the Saints, and several other teams, and that their team is the best. People who love playing Candy Crush and spending roughly $600,000 per day. There are people in the real world, like this comment when the iPhone 5 came out, that buying a $30 adapter is expensive even though they spent over $200 for a phone in the first place. Or people in the world with different interests and attractions towards people within the real world. This is results from a poll that was pulled from the Facebook application called Are You Interested? It shows numbers representing the percentage of people who responded yes if they were interested in a person who responded to them. As you can see, men, women, and the various races have very different preferences about who they want to be involved with. Or people who believe that an app that they purchased should be $1 and not $20, even though one, most app development is very expensive, and two, Apple takes about 50% of all sales. There are people who don't consider the value and the hard work that someone puts into something, and they have expectations for what something should be and cost. People who live in their virtual world are the ambassadors of their world, something like the leader of the world. However, and I know you have seen this, but people sometimes days off in their virtual world. As a result, the real world that they live in and every person in that world simply disappears. For example, you may encounter people who drive slow on the road or talking on the phone or driving faster than the speed limit or anything along those lines. And this can result in some people getting into road rage. Basically, people are in La La Land, which is their virtual world. In that world, there are no speed limits, there are no other people, and rules don't apply to your virtual world. And the same goes for everything else, like being in a class, or maybe when you are ordering something when there is a line. A person may have some conversation with the cashier, or anyone not considering the other people standing in line. While well, people are not aware of this because you and everyone in the line behind them don't exist in their reality. There's also the level of empathy and aggression, but we'll cover that later. But basically, this type of thinking is what Jesse Eisenberg said in the movie The Social Network. You have part of my attention. You have the minimal amount meaning that only your virtual world deserves the full attention and not the things that exist in the real world. Here is another thing about people who live in their world detached from the real world. Let's say that you are late for a meeting or some appointment. Now many people may say, well I'm late due to bad traffic on the road. 
This is how we justify or defend ourselves and our belief system. You are basically pushing this off or blaming something in the real world and not yourself. In the real world, there are morning, lunch, and evening rush hour traffic. That happens because you are not the only person in the world who is trying to go to work or go to lunch or to go home. This is the real world that you live in. Therefore, the real reason is that you are late for not considering real world conditions living in your virtual world. Or what about people who were mad at UPS and FedEx because Christmas presents weren't delivered on December 24th, back in 2013, the day before Christmas? The finger is pointing to UPS and FedEx in the real world, where maybe they should have purchased all the gifts earlier and not towards the very end. The bottom line, most people like to point the finger to the real world rather than pointing the finger at themselves or their belief system. But every person in the world will also live in their own virtual world. In your virtual world, when you interact with the real world, you would do that by what you say, what you write, and what you do. For example, let's say that you do not like your boss based on your belief system. Well, speaking from your beliefs, you can tell them, I don't like you. This would be interacting with someone in the real world. Well, people in the real world can respond to what you do or say or write. And your boss could say, okay, you're fired, resulting in you getting angry for why you said that in the first place. From that exchange of expressing what you believed in, you experienced consequences with how you interacted with the real world. The consequences resulting in you losing your job. Now you need to find a new job, which could take some time. You might have to sell your car, um, your house, or anything. It could put a strain to your family and your friends or anyone that is important to you. It could affect your reputation because what you say may go around to other employers, you never know, and other potential consequences. Therefore, with the consequences from speaking from your beliefs, but still preserving your virtual world, you create a filter, actually many filters. So speaking with your boss, you are thinking, I don't like you. However, that will go through your filter and what your boss will hear is, I'll work harder next time or whatever your filter creates for you. Back to our Halloween geniuses where they interacted with the real world without a filter. For the girl dressed as a Boston Marathon bombing victim, well, she lost her job. Her family was threatened and other consequences that she experienced, shaking up her belief system and creating filters. A filter you apply outbound to the real world also applies inbound with what people may say or do. For example, Let's say you have a coworker or a friend who tells you, you should vote for person X because he or she is way better. That comment would come into your virtual world through a filter and what comes out is wah, 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 the adults we hear in Charlie Brown. As a result, you would think, what did he say? I'm voting for person Y, period. So we don't have just one filter, we have many different filters with who we interact with. We have a filter when we interact with our family, our kids, our friends, people at work, even the world itself. However, when we talk to an unknown person or if we communicate on the internet, that will likely be unfiltered because our identity is unknown. You are anonymous. This means there are no direct consequences. 
Therefore, when you speak unfiltered, you're speaking directly from your belief system. This is a picture a friend of mine posted on Facebook about a year ago and explains the same thing. It says, the Japanese say you have three phases. The first phase you show to the world. The second phase you show to your close friends and your family. Well, this first phase and this second phase represents the different filters you put in place when you interact with those groups. Now the last part, the third phase you never show anyone. It is the truest reflection of who you are. Now this reflects a person speaking unfiltered without their identity being known to the world. This is the truest reflection of who you are because you are speaking directly from your belief system. Here are some more examples, but a lot more aggressive. You may even see some people write this on Facebook or some other forum. The first one says, I'm not rude, I'm honest. I just speak what's on my mind, even if most can't handle the truth. This means a person is speaking from their belief system unfiltered to the real world. However, this is the truth or this is right only to them in their virtual world. And there's the one here on the right that says, I'm not rude, I just speak what everyone else hasn't the balls to say. More or less, it means the same thing, which means you are speaking honestly for what is on your mind, which means you are speaking from your belief system unfiltered. Another picture can explain this another way, which is one of my favorites. When you are on the internet without exposing your identity, you are like a fierce animal, speaking unfiltered and most of the time, very rude and insulting. However, in the real world, you would never say what you write online in the same rude way because one, your identity is exposed, and two, there are consequences, like someone kicking your ass, for example. Basically, in the real world, you could be manhandled like this cat here on the right. Again, people say things online that most would never say face to face. Their identity will be more exposed leading to possible consequences that could affect their belief system and their lifestyle. Speaking online is the true platform where a person speaking from their belief system unfiltered will have little to no consequence for what they say. However, if you are not able to represent yourself and your belief system the same way in person where consequence will likely exist, then you cannot be confident of the belief system that you think is the truth. Here are real life examples of unfiltered actions people will do, write, or say. Let's begin with the example with what a person will write, like this comment here. Here, a user by the name of Joe Daddy is speaking from his belief system somewhat unfiltered. It's not really rude, but it's straight to the point. But here, as you would notice, his or her identity is not revealed going by the name of Joe Daddy. Since no identity is really revealed, there are no consequences. So there is no serious impact or risk to this user's lifestyle, including their belief system. Next is what a person will say. And the best example of that is likely a person speaking with another person over the phone, especially if there is no identity disclosed. The more an identity is known, the more of a filter you will put into place. A person over the phone can be rude, especially when speaking with someone in a company. Doing that is easy because the other person cannot really fight back because if they do, they might get in trouble or get fired. But again, the person's identity is not really revealed so there are little consequences and no serious impacts or risk to that person's lifestyle including their belief system. And my favorite, 
unfiltered actions a person will do. The best example of this are drivers and what drivers do on the road. When you are driving, there is some protection in terms of your identity. There is still some risk if you cut somebody off, they may follow you to your destination and confront you. These would be your raging drivers. But these drivers could be drivers who slow down at a green light, but speed up when the light starts to turn red, leaving you at the light, or slows down to see an accident on the side of the road or using their cell phone. Drivers who cut you off and don't put up their turn signal, or if you are trying to get onto the road with cars driving down the road, they seem to start driving faster as if they don't want you on the road in front of them. There are several scenarios like this. The point is that they are stuck in their virtual world and the real world around them simply disappears with the people in that world. Their identity is somewhat protected and their belief system is expressed unfiltered by their driving actions. They are inconsiderate because you and everyone around them is not important to that driver. You are seen as an obstacle that is in their way of reaching their destination because again, you are the center of your world which you believe is the actual real world. The humor about this is that if you are standing in line, why don't you see more people cut in front of you in line the same way people drive? Again, the answer is simple, because more of your identity is exposed and there are higher consequences. Cutting in front of a person may get your ass kicked, where driving provides little exposure to identity and lower consequences until they follow you home.